Hello guys, this is Ben with Joyce Game Electronics coming back with another video. Today I'll be showing you guys how to replace a back cover on a second gen SE 40mm GPS. All the stuff that you see in this video, like this glue, all these tools I'll be using, they will be all linked down in the description down below. Uh, some of the stuff that you'll need that you can get at home will be a towel just to wipe off the glue. Uh, if you guys have some clamps or a rubber band or anything that can clamp onto the screen so it can hold it down while it glues. You'll need some type of heat, so a heat gun or something just to kind of heat up the screen. And that's about it and everything else that you see will be uh, mentioned down in the description down below. So let's get started with the repair. So the first thing that you want to start off by doing is grabbing your heat gun and going around the screen just like this, just so the adhesive kind of gets a little loose. Now we're just going to be going like this around. And the temp, you want it to be set at least 180 to 200, any of that works. I usually stay at 190, just right in the middle. I noticed that's when it does the best job. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pry tool, Joe's G pry tool, and we're gonna grab a little bit of alcohol. Just go like this down and just across. And just pry it open just like this. There we go. We have the screen off next next thing that we want to do is we grab our spudger and just disconnect these points right here so just lift them up then we could just pull it back and it disconnects so there is the screen we're gonna probably clean all of that residue once we're about to put the screen back on as well as the this seal right here we're gonna clean it as well Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little more alcohol, put on, put it on this spudger piece right here. And then we're just gonna go down, just kind of go to, in a side to side motion, and the battery should just easily come up just like this. And then next, you'll just disconnect this points, just take off this tape. Once you have took the battery off, we're just gonna disconnect this point right here, as well as that point. This point is just the actual. Uh, speaker right here. Once we have disconnected that, we'll go to these three screws right here. We'll start off right here. This is just holding the Taptic engine. And there actually is one more spot, which is right here, just this connection point. You want to be really careful because if you be too hard on this ribbon right here, it'll rip off this connection right here and you, you have to solder that bot cam on. So let me just gonna lift the Taptic engine up. Next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that away, grab our, by the way this is the only screwdriver you'll need is a 0.6Y screwdriver which will be down in the description down below, our Joe's one. We're gonna remove these two screws. That is holding down the whole unit, basically, of the motherboard back cover to the housing. So we'll just remove that and put the screws aside. Just gonna lift this thing up, put it aside. Next, what we're gonna do is there's two screws right here. Basically, same thing. Just unscrew them. Should come out pretty easily. Looks like this unit has been gone through previously because some of the tape is peeled now. So if you notice that, that means your new unit has been gone through. Or if you notice any type of wear on the screws, could be indicating that the unit has been gone through. All right, once we have that all unscrewed, there's two more screws, which is right here, one right here and one right here. This is holding the connection to the power button 
And we're just gonna unscrew them. Cool. And we're just gonna use our spudger to disconnect this connection point. And we'll also just lift up this other piece right here that we just took off. We'll probably just use this right here. All right, next what we're gonna do, we're just gonna lift up this piece that we just disconnected previously. We'll just grab it with some tweezers. All right, once we have all of that stuff disconnected and all the screws out, we're gonna grab a flathead, which you can find on our website as well. And we're just gonna go from the crown side. So right here where we took off these points right here, we're gonna just go right here where the screw was. Make sure not to go on the motherboard because that will damage the motherboard and the unit will not work. So we're just gonna go right in the hole and it should just come out just as easy as that. There's this point right here. This is connected to the back cover so the heart rate and everything else will work. We're just gonna disconnect that. We could use either the, uh, the spudger or the flathead. I'll just use the flathead. You just lift it up just like that. You can't really tell on the camera. You could kind of tell, but this is a frost color. This is more of a white color. You could kind of tell on camera, but there is a difference. So we're gonna use this one, the frost one. We'll put this one aside. And let's get started with assembling the unit. So we're gonna grab our tweezers and grab any one of these. This is the band disconnecting button thingy. We're just gonna make sure that it's all good. Just put it down like that. So if you do not put the band holder the right way, it will not be flush with this. It will be very rough. So it won't be flush with this thing. But we took those off. So you always gotta wanna you always wanna look under this thing just to make sure it is flush, which right now it is. I'll show you guys once we put the unit back together. Alright, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these springs back on there. So we're just gonna be gently these springs are very flingy. So you have to be very, very gentle with them. You want them to be sitting straight up. You want everything to be kind of straight. Just so the springs work very nice. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect the motherboard. The way I do it is this side is facing this way, so the connection side is facing this way. And I go from here. So don't go from this side, but go from this side because that, that way it won't work. Next, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna kind of press down, kind of find where it's at. There we have it, it is connected now. But just press down, just to make sure. We're just gonna kind of move everything out of the way, so once we begin to put the housing on, it won't affect us putting the housing on. So that's how it should look. I'm just gonna double check to make everything's flush, which it is. Next, what we're gonna do, before actually doing that, we're gonna quickly just adjust each spring just so it's all straight. Because this is very annoying. Um, if you guys do not feel comfortable in doing this repair, this is a more of a difficult repair, a back cover, just because a lot of people have issues with these springs. It's really hard to kind of get it to work actually because it's supposed to go flush in these, one's supposed to go right there, another one's right there, other one's right there, other one's right there. So it's kind of difficult, it kind of moves around, but you really have to get it into the right spot or else the bands will not disengage. Okay. So next, we're gonna put it this way. The way you can tell 
Uh, the correct way to put it is you see those two connection points to the button. There's the button connection points right there. So we're just going to put it that way. We're just going to have to kind of line everything up and just press down just like that. And we're just going to look, see if it's all connected, which it is not. Delete that, delete that. This is so annoying. Okay, I gotta quickly readjust everything, so please edit that out. Alright, so once you have everything adjusted, the way it should be, all the springs and everything, you're gonna want to go from this side. The way you can tell the way that is correct is you see the button connections are right there. And that's where the button connections should go. There's two connections. So we're just going to go this way. It's kind of around. Just like this. Kind of line it all up. We're just going to press down. And there you go. Should be connected now. Everything looks good. I'm just going to press this kind of up the connection points. And first, first thing I usually do is I put in the motherboard connections, like the whole, the main connection, just like this. I just put it down with the plier or the spudger, or not the spudger. So what I usually do is I grab the tweezers and grab this, put it right there. And next, I'll just grab the Y.6. Kind of just screw everything back in to where it's supposed to go. Okay, and then w once we have screwed these connections in, we will see that the back cover should be all good and everything should be holding it in correctly. As you can see, everything looks good. It is kind of up right now. You can see that it's not flush because we don't have this side screwed in yet. So. I usually just check if all the these buttons work on the back, which they are working, so that's good. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reconnect this. This is the button connections. We're gonna use the spudger to do that. So we're just gonna kind of line it up. Once you have it lined up, you just push it in just like this. That looks good. Okay, sweet. And then we're just gonna connect everything else that is disconnected. Next, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab the other motherboard connection. And we're just gonna put that down. It'll just go in just like this. And as you can see now it is flush. Each side is flush. Once we're done with that, we can move on with this. This is just the cover. You could leave this off, but this is just the cover for the power button. But we're just gonna put it back on. Gonna grab the screw. We're just going to grab the other one and screw it as well. We're just going to screw it in, just like that. So now everything is screwed in. Next thing, what we got to do is we're going to reconnect the Taptic engine. I'm going to lift this ribbon up just like that. Make sure you go slide in just like this. And then this connection point, we're just going to kind of mess with it and then reconnect it. We'll probably just go ahead first and screw everything in just so it's all in place. And then we'll go with the connection. So I usually go with the biggest one first, biggest screw. Kind of get it lined up. Once you have that screwed in all the way, just to make sure that is screwed in all the way, we're just gonna grab the other one. This one's a gold screw. So this goes, I'll show you right now guys. 
This one goes right here. Once we were done with that, we're just gonna reconnect everything and then we'll go with the last last connections or screw elements. So there we go, that's connected. And then the actual connection point to the motherboard for the top deck we gotta connect right now. You gotta kind of mess with it because it's a little big I would say. We're gonna grab the last thing, which is this. This is just holding the thing down, the connection, just to make sure it doesn't unclip once it's being, once the Apple Watch is being used. So we're just gonna align it. We're gonna grab the one remaining screw. Just gonna align it. Once you kind of aligned it, we're gonna grab the screw. And there we go. Now everything is connected. Last thing we gotta do is connect the battery, which we'll just use the spudger. Yeah. Okay, once you have the battery connected, we're just gonna put some double-sided tape on here. If you have some at home, you can grab some or any kind of tape that's double-sided and it will work. I usually go with two pieces. Once you put the two pieces of double sided tape on, you just put it back on just like that. A little bit of alcohol. I'm just gonna take off the residue, old residue from the previous glue that was on here before. Just so the screen is not staying, sticking up. Once we've cleaned the screen, we'll just clean the actual housing. Reconnect the screen. The way I do it is I just kind of line it up with a spudger. I just slide all the connection points in just like this. Just flip this back down just so it's all nice and tight on there. See if it powers on. There we go, it powers on. The battery is just completely dead right now. Well, you always want to make sure before you start gluing everything back down, just to make sure it has power. We're just gonna grab our Joe's glue. That will be linked down in the description down below. I usually just put this towel right here, or this paper towel right here, just to make sure I don't get some random res residue everywhere. We're just gonna wait till this thing boots up. We're just gonna put the glue evenly all over. Okay, so we're done with that, we're just gonna press it down, just like this. And make sure it's flush and lined up, I'm just gonna put the glue aside. And this is what I mean by messy. This is why I always have a towel, paper towel. I'm just gonna wipe out all that extra residue that we have from the glue. And so yeah, once it's lined up, you can see that it's all flush everywhere now. We took off most of the glue, the extra glue. And we're just gonna grab our clamp. You could as well use a uh, rubber band, whatever works for you. And we're just gonna clamp it down just like this so it can dry. Usually it takes about, I would say eight hours to fully cure, but the first two should just be enough to just take it off. But I'll just leave it on there for eight hours. So yeah guys, that is basically how you repair this unit. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about, about being flush these buttons right here. This is just the band holder release button, so you just hold that down. So yeah, you can see that it's flush. So yeah, that's pretty much how you repair a back cover on a second gen SE 40 millimeter GPS. So if you don't feel like doing this repair yourself, you could always send it to us. We have people that have been doing this for a long time and know what they're doing. So it shouldn't be difficult for them, but I would say that it is pretty, it's probably a nine out of 10 difficult rating to do a back cover replacement because this thing is super small. The screws are super small and it's kind of difficult to get into the right spot as well as the connections. And have a great, wonderful night or day wherever you guys are. Peace.